a horrifying backstory peeled back layer by layer, and a bathroom fetus that still haunts my nightmares. That's like five things I've written down in my dream journal happening all at once. Hey everyone, Gerard the Completionist here. Adam currently is trapped in an infinitely looping hallway, and my contract here at G4 stipulates that in the event of a supernatural emergency, I am now legally Adam Sessler until he returns. So technically, in addition to hosting this show, I also have the power of attorney over all of his bank accounts. See you soon, buddy. Get better. And I've already maxed out all of our credit cards. This week is the seventh anniversary of the release of the Silent Hills playable teaser, which might be the best horror game that we never got. What happened to this much hyped game from Hideo Kojima and Guillermo del Toro, and how did PT change the indie horror landscape? Let's take a walk and find out. August 12th marks seven years since Sony released a trailer for a new game dubbed PT at their Gamescom press conference. The title was from a new developer called 7780 Studios, and the playable teaser for the new game was immediately released on the PlayStation Store for people to try worldwide. PT was only a couple of hours long and a self-contained horror game in its own right complete with jump scares, a horrifying backstory peeled back layer by layer, and a bathroom fetus that still haunts my nightmares. But video game fans are a notoriously obsessive group, and the internet quickly deduced that the announcement of a new game from a new studio was actually something more. 7780S was not a new studio at all, but rather the postcode for the Shiwoko region of Japan. Shiwoko roughly translates to Quiet or Calm Hill, and the region is also nicknamed Silent Hill by the native gamers of Japan. From there, it's simple enough to deduce that 7780S could just as easily go by another name, Silent Hills. Cue Silent Hill fans everywhere, collectively screeching in delight, despite there being no official mention of Silent Hills at all during the press conference. An ambiguously unlocked ending of the chilling demo revealed to fans that it was, in fact, a teaser for a new game called Silent Hills. In the ending cutscene, we also learned that it would be starring Norman Reedus in collaboration with legendary horror director Guillermo del Toro and developed using Kojima's Fox engine. That's like five things I've written down in my dream journal happening all at once. PT's stealth launch is far from the only time Kojima has left the entire internet overanalyzing the barest scraps of information. Between the debut trailer of the Phantom Pain from the extremely fake Moby Dick Studios that was actually Metal Gear Solid 5, a reveal Kojima claims to have planned for years, to the mysterious drip feed of information that preceded Death Stranding, it's clear that Hideo Kojima is a master troll. Or an auteur. Either way. I say it with love. In 2014, the prospect of PT's high profile collaborations and seeing Kojima's creative vision apply to a Silent Hill game had fans especially hyped. Kojima has always clearly been influenced by film, so collaborating with Del Toro and Reedus made sense for him. Kojima has also flirted with horror in his other works, but this would have been his first fully fledged entry into the genre. And with this first looping experience, it was clear that there was a master at work here. Every time you open the door at the bottom of the stairs, your brain went, F this. And gamers were into it. PT hit a million downloads in just the first month. On September 18th, 2014, Kojima revealed a Silent Hills concept trailer at the Tokyo Game Show. It's horrifying. Seriously, look at this. And that was it. That was all we ever got. The full Silent Hills game never saw the light of day. In early 2015, a breakup more tragic than Rory and Dean or Taco Bell and the Mexican Pizza hit us all hard. Hideo Kojima and Konami were done. After 30 long years together, Kojima was leaving Konami. Or maybe he was getting drop kicked out of the company. Either way, the road to Silent Hills led to a gigantic burning bridge. It was ostensibly due to corporate restructuring, which really meant Konami was deciding to take a mobile first approach. Company morale was about to look like this. In an interview with Japanese publication Nikkei Trendy Net, 
Hideki Hayakawa, the new president of Konami, who stepped into the role during the reorganization, said, Our aim is to continue to build up a comprehensive portfolio of console, arcade, and card game titles for each IP, while also making the best possible use of the mobile devices that accompany our customers in their daily life. Essentially, Hayakawa believed platform distinctions will dissolve and mobile devices will be the driving force in the continued growth of the market, meaning they no longer considered bigger AAA projects with massive budgets as potentially lucrative, and game designers that had previously been able to create top flight games they were passionate about were literally being assigned busy work. Cameras were placed all around their offices, and lunch breaks were closely monitored to keep employees on a tight leash. There were even reports that members of Kojima's team had their work computers disconnected from the internet. Konami even removed the Kojima Productions logo and the phrase, A Hideo Kojima Game, from the Metal Gear Solid website and even the final box art for Phantom Pain. In late April of 2015, just about a month after Kojima revealed he was parting ways with Konami, the publisher announced that they were officially canceling Silent Hills, and two days later, they pulled PT from the PlayStation Store. That meant if you didn't currently have the PT demo downloaded on your PlayStation 4, the game no longer existed. Rumors circulated about Konami releasing secret patches to kill any versions of the teaser that are still downloaded on Lucky Users PS4s. Despite reports, technically speaking, these are probably just rumors, but I did still unplug my PS4 with PT installed on it and turned off all console updates just in case. You can never be too careful. PS4s with the PT demo installed on them became collector's items overnight and to this day sell for crazy amounts of dollars online, or at least they get listed for crazy amounts. $2,500? You are dreaming, my guys! And so, Silent Hills is dead, but the legacy of PT will haunt us forever. Because it was a small, perfect tease for a game we'll never actually get to play, coupled with it being unceremoniously removed from the PlayStation Network, it has taken on sort of a mythical status, a ghost story that itself is finding its way into the realm of the modern urban legend, like Candyman, or the idea that pushing the crosswalk button actually makes the lights change faster, or even the idea of closing the door on an elevator. Yeah. Some of those buttons don't actually work. It's just for you. PT had so many rumors and stories about what could be found within the game itself that it has very nearly joined the pantheon of gaming myths like Polybus or Bigfoot walking the forest in San Andreas or being able to save Aerith in the original Final Fantasy VII. Fan speculation got to a point where you could theoretically unlock the ending cutscene with the Norman Reedus and Guillermo del Toro reveal by whispering the name Jareth when you hear a certain sound using the PlayStation headset plugged in. Did I try that? You bet I did. Jareth. 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 Hackers were even still finding secrets buried in the game's code as recently as 2019. Yet PT's legacy is beyond myth and legend. It spawned an indie horror boom. Previous horror hits, like the Resident Evil franchise, frequently mix the high octane with the eerie, and armed you with weapons, allowing you to stand a chance against their in-game nightmares. But fans loved the atmospheric dread found on the playable teaser so much that games like Visage, Layers of Fear, and even Resident Evil 7 and 8 were undeniably products of the cultural zeitgeist's newfound desire to wander around the dark, scaring the crap out of ourselves. So, happy 7th birthday, PT. You've grown into a terrifying child the world will never get to fully meet, but as one of the most influential game demos of all time, we will never forget you. Now, we can finally put to rest all of this rampant speculation and rumors about whether or not we'll ever see a Silent Hill game again. That's it. No more rumors or speculation. Anyway, so there are rumors of potentially two new Silent Hill games in development over at Konami. Also, maybe Konami is working with the master of horror Junji Ito? I mean, they briefly mentioned it would be cool in passing, and, and while we're at it, I was thinking, there's this great game on itch.io with like zero downloads, and it's really cool, and- ah!
Hey, thank you so much for watching this video all the way to the very end. If you're lucky enough to be able to play PT on one of those mythical PS4s, it's truly worth experiencing it for yourself. But, as an alternative, consider following the looping horror of our ongoing X-Play content. Check out Suster's take on Resident Evil Village right here, or dive into the secret history of Metroid. They're both great. I am not Adam Sessler, and I'll see you all next time. Bye bye